In order to create a view shed from multiple viewpoints, we are going to go back into our attribute table down here. And if this was selected, we would just click this white icon to unselect the attributes. And if we recreated the view shed similar to before, you would get a layer that would express the visibility from all three viewpoints. Now that we've created a tin model and the raster surface, we can load them into ArcScene and view them in a 3D setting. In this next section, we will learn how to change the viewing properties of a scene, navigate through a scene, and add additional data to aid in the analysis. First things first, we have to start ArcScene, which you can find in ArcMap on the 3D Analyst toolbar. ArcScene. Okay, let's open a blank scene. And we can either press the Add Data button at our raster, or we can open up the catalog. Catalog, maximize this. Pin the catalog to the side. And we're going to open up our file in our geodatabase and add our raster. So we have the raster here. We are going to first right click on the file name and go to Properties. We are going to go to the Base Heights tab and select Floating on a Custom Surface. We're going to make sure the file selected here is the same file for the raster that we imported into ArcScene, which it is. We're going to select OK. Now we can change the color of the raster by clicking on the gradient and choosing a different color scheme. Just like an arc map, we like this one. Okay. We can change the viewing angle by dragging the mouse around, clicking and dragging. We can zoom in and out using the scroll bar. And if we want to add a north arrow to keep ourselves oriented, we just go to View, Settings, and check the directional arrow. There's our north arrow. To explore the scene interactively, click the icon of the flying bird. Left click to increase the speed at which you fly and right click to slow down or go backwards. Press the shift key while flying to maintain a constant elevation and then move the mouse up and down to look around. You can right click to slow down until the icon of the standing bird shows up so you know you've stopped. You can also use the center on target tool, the zoom to target tool, and the set observer point tool as well, which all do exactly as they say. As always, the globe icon will reset you back to the full extent of the model. Now that we have explored our model, we can add other features to our map. First, we are going to add viewpoints to the scene. We're going to go over to our catalog on the viewpoints feature class and drag it into the table of contents. Their current elevations are set at zero, so you won't be able to see them. So we need to right click, select properties, and select the base heights tab like we did with the raster. Select floating on a custom surface and make sure that the raster file that we are using is selected. Press OK. Now on hilly terrain, they don't always show up perfectly, but you can kind of see them. There's one here. If you want to change the icon, you can do so. Making it a different color than the rest of the map, like a bright green or something sometimes works. Making the size a lot bigger. Sometimes they show up a little bit better. We can also bring in water bodies, roads, or cut blocks in the same way. And we have here our lakes and wetlands, so we'll drag that in. Now, polygon features such as water bodies don't always show up that well in Arc Scene. So after we add them, we're going to go to, we're going to right click, go to properties, and we are going to go to the extrusion tab and check extrude features in layer. Say OK. There they are. Next, we are going to do some 3D analysis using Google Earth Pro. Before we do this, we have to create a point feature class that is one point at each corner of your area of interest that we are using in ArcScene. Uh, we're going to call it Four Corners. Let's create it in ArcMap, though, because I know how to do that a little bit better. We can unselect these view shed and viewpoints, close the attribute table, and activate our AOI. Great, so let's create a new feature class. Right click on tutorial, or whatever geodatabase you're using, go to new, feature class. We are going to call it four corners. It is going to be a point feature class. Leave everything else empty, click next, select our coordinate system, Next, that's okay, that's okay, and that's okay. Great. 
we're going to go to editor start editing we are going to go to the create features tool this is similar to what we did when we created our area of interest select four corners use a point tool and when we create this layer kind of shrink the catalog down it should automatically snap to the edges of whatever layer you have so a white vertex will do one there and point that should work too that should work and that should work great editor stop editing yes we want to save our edits and now we have a point feature class layer in order to use the feature class that we just created in or the points layer we just created in Google Earth Pro we are going to have to convert it to a shape file which is still going to be a points layer but it is a different kind of file than a feature class which works in Google Earth Pro we're going to open our toolbox go to conversion tools to shape file double click feature class to shape file multiple we're just going to do one though click on your four corners layer in your table of contents drag it to input features Choose what folder you want it to go in. I made a folder called Tutorial Shape Files. Single click on that, say Add, and click OK. Now we are going to import these points into Google Earth Pro. First, open Google Earth. Once here, we're going to go to File, Import, find our folder that we saved it in shape files is the reason we save these shape files in a folder instead of a geodatabase is because shape files cannot be saved in a geodatabase so click that you might have to go down to here make sure you can see all files and we are going to select four corners from there to there make sure you select all of the files that go with the shape file much like your feature classes they're made up of a lot of other smaller files which when you're in art catalog all look like one file together but when you're in windows explorer such as now are made up of a lot of different ones so four corners underscore one is a copy of this file so don't select those if you've made two copies by accident like i did i just made one copy selecting everything with the name four corners dot whatever that is, and I'm going to say open. Uh, let's say we do. Next, we are going to check four corners so that it's on. You can see the buttons show up here. We can unclick all the other icons so they don't get in the way. Next, we are going to zoom into our screen the best that we can in order to see our four corners. We want to be directly overhead our four corners the best that we can. We'll say this is pretty good. You can see all four corners. One of them is behind here. Two, three, four. Excellent. Click Save Image, which is this icon right here. We don't need a legend or anything because we're just importing it back into arc scene. So on, go to map options, unclick title and description, legend, scale, compass. I don't need any of that. Change the resolution to maximum. Click save image right here. Make a folder to save it in. Go to our D drive. We'll go to tutorial shape files. Why not? We'll save it as a JPEG as Google image and press save. Okay, now that we've done that, we are going to go back to Arc Map. We are going to find in our catalog the image we just saved, should be in our tutorial shape files. If it's not there, sometimes this happens, you save a file and it doesn't show up yet, you can right click the folder, click refresh, and there it is Google image. Before we add it to our layer, we are going to right click, select properties. Scroll down to Spatial Reference section. We're going to click Edit. Select our projection, our coordinate system, and say OK. Say OK again. Next, we are going to open the Georeferencing toolbar in ArcMap still. I might already be up here, but if not, go to Customize, Toolbars, Georeferencing. We can lock it to our screen. Put it right here. We're kind of running out of room. Here we go. We are going to now just have the four corners shape file here and the Google image in our view screen. So click Google image, drag it in. 
And even though we've set the coordinate system to the same, you'll notice that here's our four corners. Let's remove all the other things from table of contents before we move forward. You do that by right clicking and pressing remove. So we just want four corners and Google image. Now you'll see here four corners, shape file is here, Google image. Actually, this isn't our shape file. This is our feature class, which is fine. It'll work for this. Right click Google image, go to zoom to layer. You'll notice that it's all the way over here. You can see one, two, three, four are four corners points. And even though we've made the projection the same as four corners, they show up in different parts of the map. So we have to fix that using the georeferencing toolbar.